one of the many exciting things about joining Live was was being able to come here and, and play in front of a Spanish crowd, uh, especially on a level of event and level of competition that I hadn't really yet enjoyed. Right? Uh, I've been able to play events in Spain. We are in the beautiful Valderrama, uh, which some say is the European Augusta. Uh, it's so special. There's so much history here. There's so much Spanish history here. Well, it has so much history behind. It's only a 50 years old club, but it's so much has happened through the years. I mean, uh, we had the Ryder Cup, we had World Gold Championships, and now we have Lyft. It's very exciting, and really, if there was ever a place to get my first win, I feel like this would be the perfect week. This wind in this golf course is so difficult that it's equally stressful no matter when or where you're playing it. Uh, but it was fun. It's always fun to be back home and be with the home crowd. It's always a joy to have this many people supporting me all day. It's, it's so much fun. course were you playing today? Uh, I don't know. It's brutal I mean, out there. It is brutal. I don't know. It was, I just made everything I looked at, Jerry. You have those days. I suppose this is one of those days for me, so I really should, you know, I really enjoyed it. Every time I stood over a putt, just felt like I could make it, and you don't get days like that too often, or certainly I don't, so um, yeah, I relished in it, and, and I managed to hit a lot of good shots as well, so it was a special day. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moran. See the pitch, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bustler, but everybody else in between. The Wicked Wednesday has begun. The Olympic chaos has begun as well. We've got a full house. We're locked and loaded. Let's do this thing. We're ready to roll. Brady Cannon is back in the rotation. Uh, we don't have Olympic golf this week, but that's okay because we've got a bunch of golf tournaments uh, this week, including the Canadian Women's uh, Open. We've got the uh, Live in London and uh, we've got the 3M open. We're going to break it all down with Brady Cannon. And we also have Jeff Feinberg in the house tonight. Paul Bovey's out. Jeff Feinberg's in. So uh, we got Brady Cannon, who's one of the best uh, golf cappers in the business. And we got Jeff Feinberg, one of the best golf cappers in the business. We got the Rager Redhead Cam Stewart in the house tonight. We've got a lot of golf uh, talk uh, coming up. But we won't overwhelm you with golf talk, even though we've got a bunch of golf uh, heads uh, on the program tonight. Feinberg, obviously, is a, a massive Los Angeles Charger fan uh, as well. We'll get into the Chargers, talk some uh, win totals, Harbaugh's arrival in Los Angeles, as training camps have opened across the board in the National Football League. Uh, we've got another Major League Baseball game coming up uh, tonight. Just won the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants once again. And uh, we've been on fire as far as this series is concerned uh, so far. Two nights ago on Monday night, uh, we gave you the Los Angeles Dodgers to win the game, the under uh, in the baseball game, and we took River Ryan making his debut over three and a half strikeouts. We lost the strikeout prop. Dodgers won the game. It went under the number. Last night, we went 3-0. Uh, and uh, We gave you the Dodgers. We gave you the under. And we gave you Landon Knack. Uh, over four and a half uh, strikeouts. So we went three and over five and one. I find tonight, though, is the tricky one. See, the, the, the best time to bet on the Dodgers is actually when they do have these pitchers on the hill that people have never heard of before, but they're L.A. Dodger prospects, so they're damn good. And, all right, you know, San Francisco Giants are a fading baseball team, and, the, you know, the Dodgers are minus 135, minus 140, uh, and whatnot. Tonight there's a real price uh, to be paid uh, with the Dodgers right now. Minus 185 on the money line. You're getting plus money at minus one and a half. It's an interesting pitching matchup uh, tonight. Robbie Ray is back. Uh, that's right. If you're wondering, what, what, Robbie Ray, where's he been? That's right. He hasn't pitched since last year, March 31st 
of last year. So it's been it's been like 14, 15 months, man, since this guy's uh, pitched in a major league uh, baseball game. The Giants aren't hiding the fact that he won't uh, last very long. They didn't want to give it away. And, um, you know, the exact itinerary of what their plan was, but they joked he's not throwing 110 pitches uh, tonight. So Rays on the hill for the Giants. Meanwhile, Tyler Glass now returns uh, for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He returns from injury. Uh, Glass now is a great pitcher, but he's always been known, like, for being a little bit fragile. And he's never, like, pitched more than, like, 110 innings uh, before. So I think it might be good that he was out for a little while. So you got two pitchers coming back. One guy hasn't pitched in over a year, and another guy coming back. He's been out for about, what, four weeks or so, whatever it's been. Uh, so Glass now is back tonight. It's minus 185. I think the Dodgers will win the baseball game. They're, you know, like I said, I liked it better last night. I liked it better two nights ago when they were moderate price. And the other problem is the Dodgers are on a five-game win streak right now coming out of the All-Star break. So mathematically, the odds are starting to play against uh, them winning every game. But with that being stated, do you really want to take the San Francisco Giants and they're even admitting that their pitcher is probably going to go like two, three innings uh, or something like that uh, tonight? Not a great spot. But this is interesting about the Giants. And Brady Cannon's going to step up at it, and he's actually a San Francisco uh, Giant fan. So he might be one of the few people that have heard of Tyler Fitzgerald uh, before. But a lot of people are starting to talk about Tyler Fitzgerald. And we got a piece of uh, this kid uh, tonight. He's hit a home run in five straight games. Uh, that's right. Uh, he's hit a home run in five straight games. It's pretty It's pretty crazy, actually. Fifth consecutive game because the first Giant player uh, to pull this off since Barry Bonds did it in seven consecutive games in 2004. That's pretty cool. Um, as far as, like, all time is concerned, it's pretty impressive. And not a lot of rookies uh, have done this. So he's setting a lot of records here. It was as high as plus 850 earlier in the day. I just bet it at plus 700 that Fitzgerald hits a home run tonight for the San Francisco Giants. I left it on the table last night. I knew. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't catch on to this until until he hit um, until day four, right? You know when he when he did it again. I was you know against the Dodgers. They were like, oh, this is the, uh, the you know the fourth straight game he's had a home run. I'm like, damn, really, huh? And then he did it again last night, and I was like, oh, man, I knew this kid was hitting home runs every day. So tonight I'm not getting caught off guard. If we lose uh, if we lose uh, the bet, we lose the bet. It is what it is. Uh, we've got basketball going on right now. We're going to get into the Olympic basketball. As we, we, we spent quite a bit of time talking about the Olympic basketball. A lot of people don't really know anything about the Olympics, so they can only really talk about basketball. But it's actually nearly finally here. But we've got a super cool TBT tournament going on. And i got to tell you, this tournament just delivers every year, but I've been following the TBT, the basketball tournament, uh, for years. It's better than it's ever been. These games are crazy, man. All right, you got the target scores with the Elam ending at the end of these games. Massive comebacks, dramatic stuff late, and tensions are high. Winning team gets a million dollars. So uh, this tournament is great, and we got a nightcap. We're three and one so far. Uh, with the picks that we gave you, but uh, we got another game going on. And the second half has started. It's a really good game. The crowd is lit right now. They're in Wichita. And uh, it's the Kansas Jayhawk alums taking on the Colorado Buffalo alums. And they actually, like, don't like each other. Like, going back to college days and stuff like this, it's actually, like, really, really intense and competitive. Tonight, man, you had Pitt versus uh, Penn State. All right, uh, on Pitt's home floor. And uh, the Penn State team has come out of nowhere, and now they're off to the quarterfinals in this TBT. So we're on the over of this game. I thought the over 140 and a half was a little light with Team Colorado and Mass Street, they're called, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Kansas team. We're on the Kansas team uh, on the money line. They were three-and-a-half-point favorites to three, three-and-a-half-point favorites. A lot of these games are close, so we played the money line. But we hit the over. And then we just sort of started to hit the uh, the end games over and over and over again. One of those, you know what, we're all in here. Why not? Let's roll. So uh, we got the over uh, originally in the basketball game, over 140 and a half. Then we bet the end game 145 and a half. Then we bet the end game over 156 and a half. And then I bet the end game over 159 and a half uh, in this game. 
at 49-44 for Colorado right now with six and a half left in the third quarter of play. The in-game total is currently 157 and a half. So I'm sort of right there. I'd like it to be a little bit higher scoring uh, than it is, but I'm expecting a crazy fourth quarter of this uh, TBT game. So speaking of craziness, the Olympic ceremony, uh, the opening ceremony is on Friday. But the games actually started today. And, you know, like the Olympics, there's like ceasefires and it's like peaceful. And, um, you know, it's like everybody shares a Coca-Cola. I'd like to teach the world to sing. And we all have a nice, you know, couple of weeks of harmonious sporting action. Not in France. All right. So listen, after Argentina, after Argentina won the Copa America, for whatever reason, on their team bus after, in their celebration, they started mocking France with, like, a racist chant about, like, France and, where, you know, where they're from. And, you know, we're, we're, we're pure, unlike the, the French soccer team. And, you know, it was very baffling considering France wasn't even in the freaking Copa. So I don't know what the hell Argentina's problem is with France. Well, where did Argentina open up their soccer tournament this morning in the Olympics? In France. And it got ugly. People booed their, the Argentinian national anthem, and then the Moroccan fans stepped it up a notch. And a lot of them are French, and they stepped it up a notch. They stormed the field and threw bottles and firecrackers at the Argentinians. Welcome to Paris, baby. Let's roll. One of the many exciting things about joining Live was was being able to come here and, and play in front of a Spanish crowd, uh, especially on a level of event and level of competition that I hadn't really yet enjoyed. Right, uh, been able to play events in Spain. Here in the beautiful Valderrama, uh, which some say is the European Augusta, uh, it's so special. There's so much history here. There's so much Spanish history here. Well, it has so much history behind. It's only a 50 years old club, but it's so much has happened through the years. I mean, uh, we had the Ryder Cup, we had World Gold Championships, and now we have Lyft. I feel like when it's this wind in this golf course, is so difficult that it's equally stressful no matter when or where you're playing it. Uh, but it was fun. It's always fun to be back home and be with the home crowd. It's always a joy to have this many people supporting me all day. It's, it's so much fun. OMG, what did we just witness? Our first ever double playoff in Live Golf history. <laughs> I am so pumped up right now. So much happened on the last five minutes. I mean, it looked like it was going to the crushers and Annie Barton winning. And all of a sudden, then, then uh, Abraham holding a chip, David Pooch birding eight, then let me oh. put from the... Uh, from uh, Anivan on the last, I mean, it was it was great, great watching. You know, it's it, it's really amazing to be able to do it in your home country, in front of uh, in front of my family, in front of so many friends, and, and on my favorite golf course. So um, it's it's obviously super, super, super nice. Get a view, oh Paris, let's roll. Les Olympiques, oh come on, say. All right, the Olympics have begun, baby. And the opening ceremony, just wait. So we're, we're, we got through the prelim opening day of events today. We had a mini riot at a soccer game. The Moroccan fans stormed the pitch, threw bottles, tried to attack the Argentinian players, threw firecrackers at them. They were like, bang, bang. The Argentinian players were like ducking. There's firecrackers going off. Uh, the U.S. basketball team arrived. Joel Embiid got mercifully heckled coming out of the airport, getting on the bus. 
People at the airport were telling him in French, give up your French passport. You're playing for America. You're not even American. You're a joke. Like, like the, the Olympics are supposed to be like, oh, it's cool, everyone. Like, man, they're ready. I don't know what's going to happen. They've already uh, foiled a terrorist attack earlier uh, in the day. And uh, you got a no-fly zone going on. And Team Canada's women's soccer team has minus 350 favorites, I might add. For whatever reason, are flying drones over New England, uh, New Zealand's uh, soccer practices to get some inside information. Like you're, you're minus four hundred favorites. Do you need inside information on New Zealand women's soccer team? They're gonna kick the ball around. There's your inside information. Like you know, it's actual. Like it's it total chaos. Um, they're pissed. Um, the rugby, uh, rugby seven uh, USA came back against France, so they turned on France earlier in France today. And I can't wait uh, for this stuff to play out. We have more events tomorrow. Brady Cannon, Cam Stewart in the house right now. And the golf is next week in the Olympics. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Uh, and we should note, the hottest golfer in the world right now, a two-time major champion, also happens to be the defending gold medal champion of the Olympics. Yes, indeed. Xander Shoffley. I mean... Golf's supposed to be a gentleman's sport, right? I mean, are, are they going to start getting hectic out on the links as well at Lake Oh, it's going to be going to be like a Ryder Cup. I think it's going to be lippy and chirpy yeah. out there. Yes. Like that, <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, they've had a Ryder Cup at, at this golf course, and you know, when you're handicapping the Olympics, that's really a good place to start. I want to say it was 2018 or 2019. I can't remember which year it was that they had the uh, the Ryder Cup at this particular course. Uh, Europeans won, of course, on European soil, as they typically do. Tommy Fleetwood was smoking hot that year for the European squad, and he's here representing England in the Olympics. He went 4-1 and one in, in his Molinari. Ryder Cup matches. Yeah, exactly. They, they set a record. What, what, uh, Fleet, the Fleetwood Mac, head, right? They didn't lose. Fleetwood Molinari Mac. and Fleetwood game, literally, they crushed everybody. It was un They became friends. And it was kind of an interesting pairing, too. It's like the Italian and the Brit getting together, and apparently they really hit it off, and just next thing you know, smoke show. They beat everybody. Yeah, that was a wicked performance, Brady. I'm not sure if Molinari is here representing Italy, but I know Tommy Fleetwood is here. Fleetwood and uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick uh, representing England. Another guy, as you well know, Cam, uh, following the European tour like you do, we know that Alex Noren has never won here on the PGA Tour in the States. He's won 11 times worldwide, including at this golf course, Lake Club National in France. Uh, so there's two guys that have had a lot of success at this course. But I think that's where you start and you dive in European success, Ryder Cup success. Try to find some horses for courses here for the, uh, the Olympic golf course. Matthew Pavon, sixty-six to one. He's good. Yes, just just, just for the just for the record, uh, the Americans are favored. Uh, Scotty Scheffler is the favorite to win a gold medal at plus four hundred. But as I was stating, and we'll get to the three M and all the stuff going on this week. But it's interesting to look at the advanced numbers, and next week people are really going to start to jump in and bet this, right? So Scheffler is plus four hundred. But Xander, guys, two-time major winner this uh, this summer. And the defending gold medalist, I could argue that he should be the favorite. Is that a bad number in your opinion, Brady, or is it too low for you to say, all right, Xander at six, Rory is eight, John Rahm's had a quiet year, and it would be a good way for him to wrap it up and somehow remind people that he still exists, Brady, if he was able to pull it off. But is he in good enough form right now? There, it's an awesome field, guys. Scheffler. Xander, Rory, Raw, Morikawa, Aberg, Fleetwood, Hovland, Shane Lowry, just don't piss him off, Hideki Matsuyama, <laughs> uh, Joaquin Neiman, uh, Tom Kim, Corey Connors, Fitzpatrick, Norris, Straka, Wyndham Clark, Ortiz, Min Woo Lee, uh, Abraham Answer. Uh, shout out to our boy Dubsy, Abraham Answer. Um, <laughs> but Kim, it's a stacked field we have, man. Club no, National. And it's Stack great. field. It's going to be yeah. awesome. It's loaded, and it's the live guys and the PGA guys again. So to your to your and Brady's point, kind of like a mini Ryder Cup. And yeah, Ken, the players are calling it the the real fifth major. They're like, no, nah, this isn't the unofficial fifth oh, yeah. major. This is the fifth major. Like of the year. This legacy, is it. Like, it's a major. And like think about Xander Shoffley. He has a gold medal. A gold medal. Like that is something so big. Dude, imagine he's with two majors and yeah. a gold medal in the same year, Cam, to add with another gold medal. 
And people say, oh, I can't win a big one. I, I got two gold medals around my neck and two major championships. What do you it's have? It's crazy. No, it's wild, Gabe. And the Americans, for, since, Brett, what is it, Brady, been over 40 years, all Americans, all majors, two by Xander. Like, yeah, crazy yeah, yeah since 92 down. or something yeah, like that. Uh, like, uh, 82. 82. 82. My bad, 82. 82. Uh, yeah. 40, 44 years. So I'm telling you. Xander, though? Yeah. So I was going to say, Xander, though, going to Europe, he's the type of guy they'll break us. Winning in Tokyo is different than winning in France. I'm glad that we brought this up in a sense. They're rowdy in France. Like, it's, yeah. remember yeah. the French Open? They have to cut off booze, and they were booing, like, everybody else all the time. Like, the French are, they're taking a page out of the USA, USA book. They're like, all right, you're going to come here. You're going you're gonna to know where you're playing, right? So, I think it's maybe. Xander, though, is he the type ahead. of robotic guy that can play through that better than yeah. other people? I think Scheffler's too emotional, and he'll get upset when people don't kiss his ass there. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, Scotty is so steely and so unflappable at times. That's true. Uh, you know, he's he's been at a Ryder Cup before. He's got a little bit of that experience, not as much as Xander does. I just think it's a little bit too fresh off of being the champion golfer of the year for Xander to go back and do it again. I mean, you come off of that incredible victory his second major of the year. Is he going to come right back out and win again to win the gold medal? I wouldn't put it past him. Heck, he's done it twice this year, a second major to his credit. But I, I'd be looking, Rom had a, had a very good open championship. He did. He's played well here at the Ryder Cup before. He's familiar with this course. I'd probably look elsewhere, somewhere other than that. Advantage European, Brady. Oh, yeah. One of the many exciting things about joining Live was was being able to come here and, and play in front of a Spanish crowd, uh, especially on a level of event and level of competition that I hadn't really yet enjoyed. Right, I've uh, been able to play events in Spain. Here in the beautiful Valderrama, uh, which some say is the European Augusta, uh, it's so special. There's so much history here. There's so much Spanish history here. Well, it has so much history behind. It's only a 50 years old club, but it's so much has happened through the years. I mean, uh, we had the Ryder Cup, we had World Gold Championships, and now we have Lyft. I feel like when there's this wind in this golf course, is so difficult that it's equally stressful no matter when or where you're playing it. Uh, but it was fun. It's always fun to be back home and be with the home crowd. It's always a joy to have this many people supporting me all day. It's, it's so much fun. OMG, what did we just witness? Our first ever double playoff in Live Golf history. <laughs> I am so pumped up right now. So much happened on the last five minutes. I mean, it looked like it was going to the crushers and Annie Barton winning. And all of a sudden, then, then uh, Abraham holding a chip, David Pooch birdie nade, then that little oh. putt from... Uh, from uh, Anivan on the last, I mean, it was it was great, great watching. You know, it's it, it's really amazing to be able to do it in your home country, in front of uh, in front of my family, in front of so many friends, and, and on my favorite golf course. So um, it's it's obviously super, super, super nice. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. Maastricht have come all the way back to take a lead in the TBT tournament. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news, we're getting drilled in the MLS All-Star game. 4-1 <laughs> for the Liga MX uh, right now over the MLS All-Stars. <laughs> no Messi. I'm no so Messi bad. evidently was a problem tonight. Like, yeah. No, no Messi, no Suarez. People are like, well, it's oh, the MLS yeah. All-Star game. 
What about these uh, the Giants Dodger game? You're betting the basketball tournament, MLS All Star game, probably some other things that we don't know about in the late night hours. Like I bet. No, 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 no. That's well. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. I got some woman's archery. I got to get some more woman's oh, archery. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest, nothing else is working for me besides this TBT. Everything else sucks. Well, that's not true. The, the Dodgers have been good, but yeah. uh, the MLS game blew up on me. It was low score. It was one one too. It just like just fell apart here. Uh, just fell apart. So Dodgers have runners on um, bases loaded. I think now. Yeah, is it now bases loaded? Yeah. Against Brady Cannon, San Francisco Giants. All right, so Cam, quickly, and we'll get to the picks this week. But who are you looking at for next week? Who who are you taking to win the gold medal? Uh, I really like uh, Aberg, and I think his price. I found I found a thirteen to one on one of my books, Marenzi. I think on the one we shop at, he's twelve. So I think uh, a lot of the players I saw on our board, he was ten. I think he's a very dangerous player. As I said, I'm down with the Swedish meatballs this week. Good call by you guys with Rom too. Excellent point by both of you. He played well at the Open Championship, just couldn't close the door. That's a good price for Rom, and I actually like him this week in the Live event, which we'll have here on Sports Grid. I think he's like plus 750. Very dangerous player. I think Rom's going to finish the year strong. Would not be shocked if he's in the mix in France. As yeah, it is I, for uh, you right now, what do you think? Any any love for uh, for Hovland at all, guys? Are you, Brady? I know he hasn't had the great year this been, year, but can he salvage right. it? He could. Yeah, it's it's obviously a different part of the world, but he just it hasn't really mattered for him where he is, what tournament, what major, what type of course. He's just been absolutely off at every turn this year. So I'm probably not going to decide to all of a sudden jump in on him. I, I, Rom showed me something, you know. I mean, he was close last week. We know he's finished top ten in every single live event. He has struggled in the majors until this last one. Um, and I didn't necessarily expect him to to look good at the Open, but he really did, and, and he was fighting. It, he looked like he had that old John Rom grind in him, yes. and, and he was trying to close like he did last year at the Open Championship at Royal Liverpool. And and I might look at Scheffler too because Scheffler just he's just so hard to beat. He doesn't lose. I've got to study the course a little bit more, and I agree with Cam. I'm probably going to end up siding with Europeans first. I'm going to look at Europeans first. I'll probably stay away from Shoffley. Oberg is certainly an interesting play. Norin is, is you know, this guy can't win in America, but he's won at this course before. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to probably start with the Europeans, take a hard look at Rom and Oberg, and, and I'm, I've got to consider Scheffler as well. So let's get into the 3M Open this week. Uh, no doubt after Paris, the players are most excited to go to the Twin Cities, uh, guys. Uh, like they are uh, this week. <laughs> well, that's for the three. I'll tell you, Gabe, the Open Championship was such a bloodbath. I'm actually looking forward to uh, to, to the 3M here in Minnesota. I'll tell you, all the Rory McIlroy parlays got blown up pretty hard. Yeah, like, so are the golfers, cool. too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Easy. Wasn't that a surprise? I mean, God, he just got his tail whipped. I, I, I did not expect that. Um, you know, we, we almost came through with Shane Lowry, but we know the story there. McElroy really surprised me. He really laid an egg, and I didn't expect him to. That's the one thing that you guys live in this golf betting world. There's no such thing as a lock. I've always said every lock has a key. But you're betting on a college football team. You sort of know what you're going to get, right? You're betting on an NFL game. You sort of know what you get. Golf guys, so erratic. It's such a hit or miss sport like, at the best of times. Like they say, baseball players, you know, fa- the best baseball players fail seven out of ten times. Golf is even harder, Cam. Gabe, you, said, like, tell you, you can never confidently say, oh, I guarantee you this exactly. guy's going to be top five. Look at well, me. Remember, guys, I, I lost. I put a $50 parlay together at uh, the, 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 the the PGA or whatever. Scheffler was the one that screwed me that wasn't top yeah. 20 of all people. <laughs> and then I had a second one as a cushion, top 40, and he finished 41st. And I'm ah. like, yeah, nothing's a lock in golf, man. Well, welcome to our world, Gabe. But I got to tell you, I'm in a sharp pool with an elimination pool. Every single guy got eliminated last week. So we all lived to the 3M. Like, imagine that. Nine guys left. Everybody got, had somebody. Rory, Hatton, DeChambeau, every single chalk player. See ya. That's the whole thing. It was one of the craziest open championships ever. But at the 3M, I think Brady and I have a couple of the same guys. We'll see if we're reading each other's mail, buddy. Uh, we'll hit this on the other side. We got some live golf, and it's also the Canadian women's uh, yes, Canadians uh, Canadian Open, the woman Canadian yes. Open you know, uh, this that. week too.
one of the many exciting things about joining Live was was being able to come here and, and play in front of a Spanish crowd, uh, especially on a level of event and level of competition that I hadn't really yet enjoyed, right? I've uh, been able to play events in Spain. We are in the beautiful Valderrama, uh, which some say is the European Augusta. Uh, it's so special, there's so much history here, there's so much Spanish history here. Well, it has so much history behind. It's only a 50 years old club, but it's so much has happened through the years. I mean, uh, we had the Ryder Cup, we had World Gold Championships, and now we have Lyft. This wind in this golf course is so difficult that it's equally stressful no matter when or where you're playing it. Uh, but it was fun. It's always fun to be back home and be with the home crowd. It's always a joy to have this many people supporting me all day. It's, it's so much fun. OMG, what did we just witness? Our first ever double playoff in Live Golf history. <laughs> I am so pumped up right now. So much happened on the last five minutes. I mean, it looked like it was going to the crushers and Annie Barton winning, and all of a sudden, then, uh, then uh, Abraham holding a chip, David Pooch birdie nade, then that oh, little pass wow. from, uh, from uh, Annie Barton on the last. I mean, it was, it was great, great watching. You know, it's, it, it's really amazing to be able to do it in your home country, in front of uh, in front of my family, in front of so many friends and, and on my favorite golf course. So um, it's it's obviously super 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 nice. Man, I just love the concept of this TBT tournament. You can't top like just having a million dollars on the line for like a pickup like tournament and basketball uh, game. And um, we're, we're heading into the quarterfinals. So the winners of tonight's games are off to the quarterfinals and it'll continue uh, this weekend. But this tournament just keeps on getting bigger and better. And even though you would figure, man, it's kind of going up against a lot of stuff. Their opening weekend kind of got swept up and buried by a lot of things. I think it was, it was basically, you know, it was, there was just so much stuff going on when they, when they started this tournament. But this week, it's kind of taken center stage. You know, there's baseball going on. But Mass Street right now, we're up at 10 spot. Fun basketball game going on in Wichita. All right, so let's get to uh, some golf picks uh, here. 3M uh, Open. And I've had success before, guys, taking Canadians – in like Michigan, in Ohio, in in the American Midwest, Minneapolis is very Canadian like same temperature, same type of grass, golf courses, uh shorter fields too in a lot of these tournaments as well and it's a good opportunity for the Canadian golfers to thrive. But the Canadian golf um the men have been on a great run this year guys. Uh, so I'll start off with you Brady because I know you're looking at one of the Canadians uh this week. Uh, talk to me about the 3M yeah, it, you know, it gets to the time of the year, guys, where in addition to your traditional handicap, looking at the stats and the odds and the market and all that good stuff, there's also motivational factors. We're nearing the FedEx Cup playoffs, so guys are trying to get into the top 70, you know, so they can have a postseason and earn some extra cash, keep their job. And then there's also the President's Cup in Montreal, captained by Mike Weir. So the Canadians have that extra special, you know, motivation to try and make that team. Adam Hadwin is a guy that I landed on this week. Now, he's plenty safe for the FedEx Cup, uh, the postseason. He currently is 37th in the standings. So he's been playing, obviously, very well this season. If he continues that, he's got a good shot to make it into the top 30 and reach the Tour Championship in about a month at East Lake Golf Club in Atlanta. But he does currently sit 11th in the international team standings. Uh, the first six guys are automatically on the squad. The next six guys will be captain's picks by Mike Weir. So you got to believe Hadwin, you know, is focused to continue to play well. I don't think you should put all your eggs in that motivational basket when you're handicapping because we know athletes don't tend to be able to just flip a switch. 
But I think it helps that Hadwin has has been playing well and is probably focused with that type of thing on his mind. I got him at 45 to 1. He's played extremely well to your point, Gabe, being close to the Canadian border. He's got a fourth place finish here and a sixth place finish here in his career. So he's played very well at this golf course in the past. And we've seen him do well in Detroit. He was in a playoff just last summer at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. So I think you're right there. You know, proximity to his home country, he's done well. I went with one shorter shot than that, and that is the meaty, beady, big and bouncy Tom Hoagie sandwich at 30 to 1. I think he fits the profile of this golf course very well. Great iron player. One of the best ball strikers in the world. Very accurate off the tee, and he can putt. It's pretty much a stock TPC resort type course. And I don't think we're going to have a full-blown birdie fest, but that's what it takes. Drive it long and straight, you know, nail your irons and hold some putts. And there's not many better in this field than Tom Hoagie. Then I went with a couple of longer shots. Chan Kim, who is trying to make a push to get into that top 70 for the postseason and has been playing really well as of late. 29th last week at the Barracuda. 10th at the ISCO, the alternate event when they were playing the Scottish Open, and then 12th at the John Deere. So the game has been good. He makes a lot of birdies. He's also excellent on approach and in total driving. 15th on tour, or 36th on tour overall in total driving. And then a guy that I was on at the Scottish Open, he started out well, started out well at the Open. He just has to put four days together. He's got the talent, and that's the Englishman, Matt Wallace. I got him at 80 to one. And I think this guy is good. He's won already on the PGA tour. I think in a light field like this, he can, he can be a factor again. He's just got to put a few days together. He's got the ball striking. He's got the short game. I just want to see him do it for more than one or two days. Interesting uh, selections, Cam. What do you think about, uh, what do you think about his picks? I love it. I'm on Hoagie as well. I got uh, 33. Adam Hadwin I have for a top 20. I'm going to sprinkle top 10. Chan Kim is a hot golfer. And Matt Wallace, is there something in common here too, Brady? It's funny, Gabe. This course has a lot of water. No plays yeah. well. It's very similar to the Florida swing there, Brady, like Valspar and stuff. Wallace plays well in that type of course. Hadwin plays well in that type of course. Yeah, and Hoagie, Hadwin's only like, PGA all... Tour win at the Valspar. That... It's actually kind of interesting. A couple tournaments of the Florida Swing have guys that I think really fit the bill this week, and you have those guys on your card. I like it. Yeah, I Chan used Valspar Kim. actually as a correlated Kim's course this week. Yeah. You know what? There seems to be every – this year at least, and if somebody's big tournaments, I'm like, who the hell is this Brian guy? Who the hell is this guy? Who the hell is that guy? So I was going to ask you, Brady and Cam, but I'll start with you first, Brady. Is there a guy that, like, we've never heard of before that, you know what, wouldn't wouldn't surprise you if he actually is in the mix here? And to be honest, uh, your boy that you just took here, uh, Chan Kim's not exactly a household name. I know you guys know him. Absolutely. So I guess I guess he's, he's that guy for you. Cam, do you have a guy that's like an off-the-radar type of uh, player? I got a name I'll throw out there to you guys, you. but who do you got here, Cam? Because it seems like this summer there have been a lot of just – who the hell is this guy coming out of nowhere yeah. and playing well? Well, Gabe, uh, they call him uh, Matt, Big Mac Matt Meisner. People are going, who the hell's Mac Meisner? Take a look at this guy's record. Top 20 in three of the last four events. He's on fire. Brady, I got him at 60, and one of these guys might win. Another guy, watch out for my Filipino friend, Mr. Hoey. I told my neighbor. I go, this guy's on fire. Rico Hoey, Gabe, is the pride of the Philippines. All he a second a fourth he's been playing really really well he's close they make my list i know people know jake afternoon nap but one quick story this is a very important storyline here eric von ruin the south african went to minnesota his best buddy died on this oh nice he's, he's considering this a major i heard him on golf channel he wants this more than like anything watch out for evr this week first round leader and 40 to one he is jacked in prime and he always plays well he's got the whole state of minnesota behind him Hey, Some I got another one gopher, for you, Gabe. Uh, yeah. Swag, another I like one. that. You talk yeah. about it. You talk, you know, a good call there with him going to Minnesota, Cam. I didn't think about that, and you're spot on. Um, I know a guy that is uh, attracting some sharp action, and he's kind of one of those out-of-the-blue guys. You're going to hear about him probably pretty soon, and that's the top-ranked amateur in the world, Luke Clanton. Uh, that was my guy. on fire. That was yeah, just throw your guy, you. Gabe. But he is, he's a getting player, respect. Man. He's th- I'm seeing he 30 is, to 1. That's yeah. respect. He played well imagine? at the Rocket Mortgage, too, right? Perks, this seems like a perfect stupid. tournament for him. I had Clanton. He almost won the week I took him, Gabe. This guy's amazing. Like, people don't know. There's guys, all these young players are coming out of nowhere, and nobody even, like, they're wicked. 
They're not afraid at all. Michael I swear, Taylor, that was the guy him. I was going to ask about. And here's Watch another guy that I haven't heard either of you two talk about in a little while, and you did for a little while. And the fact that, and I hate to say this, but being associated with the Bills, I'm like, oh, he'll never win if he's buddies with Josh Allen. Cashmere Keith. Keith Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah, guys well, talk about it. What like about Keith this Mitchell week? this week? What about Mitchell? People like him this week, Gabe, but I'm going to tell you something. Keith Mitchell's one of those guys I put a line through. He just can't win. Like, and if he beats me, yeah. he beats me. I want I want he 50 makes, to 1. I don't get it. Sorry. Not he, betting him. He makes sense in the stats week in and week out, yep. especially against a weaker field. He came up as one of the highest rated guys in my numbers this week. But I'm like you, Cam. I've just, I, I just got to put it. I can't get there. And he always does it, it seems like, every event. He takes a lot of sharp action. He's one of those guys that the wise guys always fear, feel that there's value on, which there, there is, but he just never gets to the house. He won one time at the Honda Classic many years ago at like 200 or 300 to 1. Um, but he always seems to have a day where he might shoot even par. Then the next yep. day he goes out and he shoots 63, and you're like, okay, here he comes. And then he just – he's kind of like my Matt Wallace. He'll have a couple of hot days, but he can't seem to do it for four days. Austin Ekro, not Eckler, but uh, yeah. Ekro. He oh, seems he's to be on another list. He's, he's, he's a trendy sharp, pick. He's this on week, my huh? list. He's on. He's yeah. in the my The kiss is on the list. Yes, <laughs> Austin he's, Ekro. He's, he's beer number four. Game on my list. Good Watch player. out for Ekro. He hits it a mile too. He'll do really well at this course this week. Right, hang in here, Brady. Brady. We'll get you out in a minute. I just want to get your uh, any live uh, live thoughts on the yeah, way out. Funny, Brady. One of the many exciting things about joining Live was was being able to come here and, and play in front of a Spanish crowd, uh, especially on a level of event and level of competition that I hadn't really yet enjoyed. Right, uh, been able to play events in Spain. Here in the beautiful Valderrama, uh, which some say is the European Augusta, uh, it's so special. There's so much history here. There's so much Spanish history here. Well, it has so much history behind. It's only a 50 years old club, but it's so much has happened through the years. I mean, uh, we had the Ryder Cup, we had World Gold Championships, and now we have Lyft. I feel like when it's this windy, this golf course is so difficult that it's equally stressful no matter when or where you're playing it. Uh, but it was fun. It's always fun to be back home and be with the home crowd. It's always a joy to have this many people supporting me all day. It's, it's so much fun. OMG, what did we just witness? Our first ever double playoff in Live Golf history. <laughs> I am so pumped up right now. So much happened on the last five minutes. I mean, it looked like it was going to the crushers and Annie Barton winning. And all of a sudden, then, then uh, Abraham holding a chip, David Pooch birdie nade, then let me oh. pass from the... Uh, from uh, Anivan on the last, I mean, it was it was great, great watching. You know, it's it, it's really amazing to be able to do it in your home country, in front of uh, in front of my family, in front of so many friends, and you know, my favorite golf course. So um, it's it's obviously super, super, super nice. This is Sports Rage. I'm Red We're kicking up Brady Cannon in the house. His San Francisco Giants taking on my Los Angeles Dodgers. But, uh, Brady, like a lot of Giants uh, summers, it's a lost summer in the Bay. Uh, once again, <laughs> I'll get yeah, yeah. philosophical. <laughs> lost, lost summer in the Bay. <laughs> hey, I, I, you know, I had my run 2012, 2014, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever it was. You know, we, we, yeah, you won we more than the Dodgers and... have. You won three. We've only won once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, our, our man Bruce Bochi, he decides to hang it up. 
And, and what does he do? He comes back to the sport and he wins another one. The guy's incredible. Love that guy, the boach. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, and I thought Bob Melvin would be a really nice change there for the San Francisco Giants. Hasn't worked out yet this year, but I think Melvin will find his groove and improve that team. He's a very good manager. He's won manager of the year literally like three times. I think he's going to figure it out and have this team turned around. They just really don't have the horses. They've been going after these free agents. They couldn't land Judge. They couldn't land Otani. They couldn't land Bryce Harper. They, they need a big boy like that. They, they need a new Buster Posey, you know? Yeah. Uh, they got the kid Patrick Bailey behind the dish, who's really a good player, should be an up-and-comer. You mentioned Tyler too. Fitzgerald. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They've got some talent, but they probably need a couple of real studs to get to that next level. They're an average to better than average team right now, but not a championship level team yet. You're 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 exactly right as far as the ownership. I know people they frustrate local fans a lot with their moves. We've talked about it from changing the PA announcer to the food, like just little things, right? They charge people money for like fan bricks and they're like, oh, by the way, we're moving them and they don't matter anymore, <laughs> right? Stuff like that. Like they really upset people, but they have tried. They tried to get Bryce Harper. They tried to get Aaron Judge. They tried to get Otani. Like they've tried every time there's a free agent, they offer like, how much money do you they want? They have money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and they got the Korean dude, the Korean MVP, and then he gets hurt. But you're right. right. Eventually, eventually they'll break through. But it's a tough division because as we see, San oh, yeah. Diego are all in. These guys are nuts. They sign everybody and, all oh, the by time. The way, too. Arizona went to the freaking World Series last year. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. it's a tough and they're heating up again now. Start. Exactly. San yeah, Diego yeah, are yeah. in all the time now. Okay. So uh, Live Golf uh, United Kingdom uh, this week. The Live countering the Olympics. Um, Cam. And uh, Brady, I'll start with you, Cam. Any uh, any opinions here on the live? And you look at the live, and uh, right at the top here, you got John Rahm's the favorite, Bryson DeChambeau, your boy Hatton, Neiman, Garcia. So we got some guys that are going to be playing in the Olympics uh, here playing um, in the live. Not all of them, but some of them. What do you think about the live in the U.K., Cam? I like uh, I like Rom, and I told you, uh, Brady talked about it. I like what he did off the Open Championship. He's going to be playing with an edge and an anger. They're not leaving. They don't stay in the U.K., I don't know if you're looking for a real crazy long shot game, but I don't know, Brady, am I nuts? I, I found Richard Bland at 35 to one. People are like, are you nuts, Cam? No, this guy actually won on the senior tour. He's actually been great on live. I thought he was one of those guys that was just packing it in, going to get a paycheck, and now all of a sudden he's beating good players. So don't be surprised. This guy's sneaky too, and he's he's English. So watch out for him as a crazy underdog. But I like John. Uh, he's John English Rock. too. Don't he's sneaky. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, we're in the UK. Yeah, he's a Richard Bland game. Mr. Bland. <laughs> what do you know well, anything yeah, about I this mean, course, uh, Brady, that we're playing on? Any insight to this at all? A, a little yeah. bit. It, it's it's new on the map. You know, it, it, one thing I like about it is the live has has gone to some very exclusive mm -hmm. clubs. This is the JCB Golf and Country Club. I think it's not too far out of Manchester uh, is where it's located in England. I went with all Europeans. So you got to be a royal European member or a sir yeah. to play yeah. there or something like that. Yeah. You're saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, they played it a very. Yeah. They played a super <laughs> exclusive course in Hong Kong. Kong. They went to Valderrama. I mean, they're playing some big boy courses. I know the fairways are a little wider, certainly wider than Valderrama. That's a more of a narrow track where uh, where we landed on Sergio and hit a winner. That was yep. nice. Um, I, you guys keep me around for the live picks because I've hit four pre-tournament outrights this year. I've only wow. hit one on the PGA Tour. So, Dude, uh, I remember we started hot. talking before. You're like, I don't really play to live that much. Now you're hitting no, every I week. Know. <laughs> I know. Thank it was goodness crazy for how he won two games. You know, they're like, hey, crazy. we need you to handicap some live. I'm like, okay. And bang, it, it's been a, a pot of gold. And you've been coming back. Like, Lahiri had a huge lead, and then Sergio uh, ties him and then wins in a playoff. I'm God like, Brady and Carver? He's, you guys got Lahiri's horses my up your butt. Bigger player. Yes, he's a good guy. <laughs> he gagged for me when I had Cam Smith, too, at the players. Love that guy. <laughs> so... So this uh, this yeah. course, a little bit shorter, I think it's about 7,300 yards. Fairways are a little bit wider. So mm -hmm. I gravitated towards bigger hitters. I think they can maybe overpower this place a little bit. I landed on Dean Burmester at 25 to 1. Yes. And you guys, we talk about Rom and Hatton and Sergio. This guy may be actually the best player on live this year. He won at Doral, Miami. We hit that one. Um, he just finished 19th at the Open. He was 12th at the PGA Championship, and he has three additional top 10 finishes on the live circuit this year in addition to his win. He's been red hot. Burmester hits it a long way. I went with him at 25 to 1. 
Uh, and then I'm with you. I'm, I'm with Richard Bland. How can you knock a guy? He goes back to back in major championships on the senior tour. We have the senior same pick. PCA, U.S. Open senior uh, edition. He wins them both in, in like all. Dick Bland. Was not Dick, yeah, Dick, Dick Bland. Bland. He's our, he's Dick, our Dick guy. Dick Bland, best, best name in sports since uh, my my main man, Dick Pound. Yeah, Dick Pound and Dick go. Bland. Hey, hey, Brady, I literally have three picks. I have Rom, Burmester, and Bland. Like, and I without even talking to you. Wow, this is interesting. Well, oh, and, we'll and, and it's not only that. So he goes back to play with with the younger guys, right? Mm -hmm. He finished ninth in Nashville and fourteenth at Angelusia, Spain. So I mean, he's playing with everybody, no matter how old you are. Uh, so I like Bland. I got him at thirty. You got a better number than me. Uh, mm -hmm. And finally, another big hitter who's a really talented guy and has won on the European tour before at 40 to one. I went with Adrian Morocco. Good pick the Polish hammer. Yeah. Great stuff. Polish Brady hammer, Cannon. Indeed. You guys want to win as Brady's uh, been killing. He just had four winners on the live tour. Always uh, lighting it up on the PGA I'm tour. For Norman to call me up. I'm going to defect to live here pretty soon. Yeah. I'm going to quit handy. I'm just going all <laughs> live. I'm waiting Looks for like Norman they... to give me a call, cut me a big check. It looks Brady, nice in those videos, Brady. They got hot girls are in shorts. I'm like, ooh, very loose atmosphere. Roll, Lynn. Lynn. Yeah, seriously. Get us a job. <laughs> yeah, I told you guys uh, about about Paulina. You see, it was uh, the weather was so bad. She didn't even bother showing up to support her man last week. Yeah. She was she was off partying oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Didn't, yeah, didn't, didn't go. Bad right. weather. He did well, used to the live. Yeah, used to live for that's I know. Good. Surprisingly. Of all people, right, people right, right, like in bad weather. Uh, all queer. One of the many exciting things about joining Live was was being able to come here and, and play in front of a Spanish crowd, uh, especially on a level of event and level of competition that I hadn't really yet enjoyed, right? I've uh, been able to play events in Spain. We are in the beautiful Valderrama, uh, which some say is the European Augusta. Uh, it's so special, there's so much history here, there's so much Spanish history here. Well, it has so much history behind. It's only a 50 years old club, but it's so much has happened through the years. I mean, uh, we had the Ryder Cup, we had World Gold Championships, and now we have Lyft. so difficult that it's equally stressful no matter when or where you're playing it uh, but it was fun it's always fun to be back home and be with the home crowd it's always a joy to have this many people supporting me all day it's, it's so much fun omg what did we just witness our first ever double playoff in live golf history <laughs> i am so pumped up right now so much happened on the last five minutes i mean it looked like it was going to the crushers and anybody winning and all of a sudden then then uh, abraham holding a chip david pooch birdie nay then let me oh, the from, uh, from uh, anyone on the last i mean it was it was great great watching you know it's it, it's really amazing to be able to do it in your home country, in front of uh, in front of my family, in front of so many friends, and, and on my favorite golf course. So um, it's it's obviously super 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 nice. Always awesome stuff for Brady Cannon. Our boy Jeff Feinberg. We have more golf talk coming up from another golf uh, junkie in the house. Uh, but I remember if off the top of the program, I talked about this uh, this game, the TBT game. And I said, so I took the in-game, uh, the pregame 140 and a half over. Then we took an in-game 146 and a half over. Then we took an in-game 156 and a half over. And I figured, all right, we'll push our luck one last time. And we'll go over the 159 
uh, and a half, but the 159 and a half gets there. It's 81 80 right now. And this game is freaking lit. The target score is 84. So it's the first team to 84. We have an 81 80 game. The um, Kansas Jayhawk crew are up on the Colorado Buffalo crew right now. I'm on, so we've already like swept the board. We killed all these totals, which is good. But I'm also on Mass Street on the money line. So I need the, um, I'm on the uh, team Kansas to get it done. This game is in Wichita, Kansas. I got to tell you, like, the quality of this tournament has been unbelievable this year. These games, like, uh, it's amazing how close they are at the end coming down. Like, there was a game earlier tonight between the Pitt crew and the Penn State crew. And I tell you what, this could really, uh, they really, the, the way this, all this stuff sets up, but in fact, Cam, it's a lot like the NCAA tournament. They know what they're doing when they set the bracket up. The next matchup they're going head-to-head is Louisville versus Kentucky. Oh, perfect. To go to the semifinals. I like Montrose that. Harrell is, a, dude, the Louisville team is stacked. I actually don't like them. There's a bunch of dudes that beat Michigan from, like, the 2014 <laughs> championship team. That Still guy, Russ Smith. Smith. Yes, no, no, yes. it's like, you know, when yeah. you play against I someone when you're a kid or something, and years later, it happened to me, like, I've competed like hockey, like some guys you get yeah. along with, and some guys you just sort of you give a dirty look to, and you're like, man, I right. like that guy when we play. I still don't like you now. Like I remember me and this dude just passed each other, and like, where do we know each other from? And it was like, oh man, we used to fight in hockey, and like in the old day, like it was one of those. When I look you. at Louisville, I'm like, that's well, that guy. I'm like, oh, that dude. I remember him that night. He hit that shot against Michigan, and then Montrez Harrell. I've never liked that guy, Cam, from the NBA. Yeah. He's on the team. And he's bullying people. He's dunking in people's faces. He wants to fight with everybody. <laughs> and, like, and I tell you what, the uh, the Kentucky guys, these guys are run and gun. That's going to be an awesome game, watching them go head-to-head. Your boys, Colorado, here right now are about to tie this game. This game is crazy. I like the way you set that up because Louisville will want to play like a street ball game and turn it like get physical, and Kentucky will want to run and gun. So it's a nice contrast in styles there. Yeah, that you, all those Louisville teams, Gabe, they got a lot of uh, – you know, it's tough town. Tough town. They, they their, their teams are kind of like, you know, they are, they are like Louisville. They're their just, players they're just are angry. made for a tournament like this. They're yes. good sort of yes. street ball antagonizers. Like they're You're right. They're good. Like they're very like the, this tournament is different. This isn't like the NBA. Anyone who watches this too, and there are guys that played in the NBA in this term. You can't be an active NBA player, but you can be a former NBA player. You can't be an active NBA player and play in this tournament. Oh, boy, Colorado can win here right now. And I love the They're point that you brought up. And we, we talk about this all the time, Marenzi. You're playing for a million. Like, this is real for these people. This is money to live. This is like, it's not like some guy, oh, yeah, had a crappy game tonight. Who cares? I'm making this. Like, this is it. You need the bag. Like, you're playing for your buddy, your family, your future. Like, it's a big, big deal. And that's the thing. Money, it brings out the hunger. That's why this tournament works. We talked about this for years. Yeah, some of some of the teams are richer than others. Remember, we've gone over the splits on how some of the teams do it. But yeah, you're right. To some of these dudes, you know what? If you're you know if you're getting one hundred fifty thousand dollars to win the tournament, it's generally you know seventy five k per player, one hundred k per player, depending on whether you have an investor or not. Right, like the investor puts the money in first for the team. I got to say though, with the popularity of this tournament. And I see, man, you got you got fans, the arenas are packed. You got a national television deal on FS1 right now. I think it's time to bump it up to like, you know, 2 million, all right, might be a bit much and just crush them. It's hard to just double the money. Mm-hmm. But they should up the prize money to like 1.5 million now. I agree. Or even like get it get it closer to 2. The the, the quality of player is big, but if you really if if players new listen, if I play in this tournament and my team wins, I'm going to get $250,000. They'll be they'll, you'll get a better quality of player even, but this tournament has gotten really really good. Like the quality is good. You got former NBA guys. Jimmer Fredette was just in this tournament. He just got eliminated and now he's off to Paris actually. Jimmer Fredette is on Team USA men's 3 on 3 basketball team, which I'm not really in love with, to be honest, but to their defense, they just won like a world tournament like last year with Jimmer Fredette. Yeah.